For months now, I have been bringing progressive after progressive after progressive on this program in an effort to expand the squad and get them elected. Every single Saturday, I usually have a brand new congressional candidate to introduce you to. And quite a bit of them saw success. They won their Democratic Party primaries. And on Tuesday night, we had more than 30 progressives up for election. Now, I'm not including the progressives who are already incumbents. Pramila Jayapal, Katie Porter, Ro Khanna, Barbara Lee, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Ayanna Presley. We're not including them. So when I say there were 30 progressives up for election, I'm referring to new progressives who, if elected, would be adding to our numbers in Congress, expanding the block of left-wing people in Congress. So the question is, how many of them actually were successful? How many of the progressives who won their Democratic Party primaries were successful? Well, I'll be honest with you, I was disappointed with the results, but it's not its not all bad. There were some really important key victories, but we lost a lot of big names, and that's disappointing to me. And there were a lot of key races that didn't go as we suspected. So there's a lot, there's some puzzling congressional victories in here that we're going to talk about, but first of all, we're going to get to all of the progressive congressional candidates that lost. And since there were so many, I can't go through and give you the breakdowns as to, you know, the margin and how big the loss was. I'm just going to name all of the progressives that lost. And that list, unfortunately, is huge. So that includes Nate McMurray running in New York's 27th congressional district, Adam Christensen running in Florida's 3rd congressional district, Adrian Bell, running in the 14th Congressional District of Texas. Antonia Ilyasin, running in Mississippi's 1st Congressional District. Audrey Denny, running in California's 1st Congressional District. Beth Doglio, running in Washington's 10th Congressional District. Kathy Kunkel, running in West Virginia's 2nd Congressional District. Christine Olivo, running in Florida's 24th Congressional District. Cindy Banyai, running in Florida's 19th Congressional District. Dana Allen Ferguson, running in Michigan's 1st Congressional District. Donna Imam, running in Texas's 31st Congressional District. Georgette Gomez, running in California's 53rd Congressional District. Hillary Turner, running in West Virginia's 3rd Congressional District. John Headley, running in Michigan's 6th Congressional District. Julie Oliver, running in the 25th Congressional District of Texas. Kara Eastman, running in Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District. Kathy Ellis, running in the 8th Congressional District of Missouri. Kim Nelson, running in South Carolina's 4th Congressional District. Liam O'Mara, running in California's 42nd Congressional District. Mia Mason, running in Maryland's 1st Congressional District. Mike Siegel, running in Texas's 10th Congressional District. Nick Rabondo, running in Ohio's 5th Congressional District. Qasem Rashid, running in Virginia. Virginia's 1st Congressional District, Ray Lenzi running in Illinois' 12th Congressional District, and last but certainly not least, Shahid Buttar running in California's 12th Congressional District against Nancy Pelosi. All of these progressives lost. And some of these hurt really bad to where when I saw the results, it was like a gut punch. And when I say that these are progressives, these are progressives. I saw a lot of graphics being spread online about all of these progressive races to look out for. And when I say that these are progressives, I am telling you I spent countless hours vetting each and every single one of these individuals to ensure that these are actually progressive people. They were either endorsed by Justice Democrats or a brand new Congress or endorsed by someone like Bernie Sanders. And more importantly, the policies on their page were displayed clearly and explicitly. I saw, you know, confirmation that they support either Medicare for all or single, single payer. If I see any rhetoric relating to expanding access to health care, I don't count them as a progressive. So these individuals are just the ones that are progressive. And these ones lost. And that's really disappointing. Now, having said that, it wasn't all bad. There were some victories. First of all, 85% of DSA endorsed candidates running at the local level in states across the country won their races. This is according to the Gravel Institute. This is excellent news. 
Now, in terms of who won, of course, all of the incumbent progressives, they won easily. We're talking about the entire squad. Katie Porter, Ro Khanna, Pramila Jayapal, they all won. Now, who are the new progressives that will be going to Congress? How many new members of the squad will there be? Well, um, it's not a lot, but it's still, it's still important. We're looking at potentially five new members of the squad, four confirmed, one hanging in the balance in a race that has not been called. So, who is hanging in the balance currently? Well, in the 34th Congressional District of California, David Kim is currently facing off against Democratic incumbent Jimmy Gomez. David Kim is a progressive. And currently, with 77% of precincts reporting, Jimmy Gomez is leading 52.6 to 47.4. So it is not over yet. There are still more votes to be counted. We could have a progressive oust an incumbent corporate Democrat. If David Kim pulls this off, he will unquestionably be a very progressive member of the squad. I had him on the program. I was thoroughly impressed. Basically, if you take Marianne Williamson, Andrew Yang, and Bernie Sanders, and you squash them all together into one candidate, you get David Kim. If he wins this, if he pulls this out, this is huge news. Now, we did get four confirmed victories. The first one is Cori Bush. Now, this was expected, but nonetheless, it still is really important. In the first congressional district of Missouri, Cori Bush defeated her Republican opponent, Anthony Rogers, by a landslide. We're talking almost 50 points. This is huge. In New York's 16th congressional district, Jamal Bowman defeated his Republican opponent, Patrick McNamus, also in a landslide, 83 to 17%. Phenomenal win. When it comes to the 3rd Congressional District of Illinois, Marie Newman, who ousted conservative Democrat Dan Lipinski, she defeated her Republican opponent, 53.2 to 46.8. When it comes to the 17th Congressional District of New York, Mondaire Jones defeated his Republican opponent, 47.5 to 44.1, with 35% of precincts reporting, although this race has been called for Mondaire Jones, so it was close. But it seems as if there is enough confidence to assert that there is going to be a Mondaire Jones victory. I'm not sure of the criteria, but it's been called and um, he won. So that is four, possibly five new progressives that will be going to Congress. And when they do go to Congress, they will be just as loud and unapologetically progressive as AOC, as Ilhan Omar. Will they be perfect? No. Will we disagree with them and be disappointed in their votes from time to time? Yes, but this is a victory for us. This is a huge victory. And my favorite of all of these, um, it's going to be a tie between David Kim and Cori Bush. Um, Cori Bush really is just, she's a phenomenal candidate. I think one of the best congressional candidates running in the country. So the fact that she made it and she will be a member of Congress, this is honestly this is huge for the movement. Um, now, having said that, there's more than just the House races. Um, there were some really important races for the U.S. Senate. In terms of progressives, we had two that I was watching very closely. Paula Jean Swearingen in West Virginia going up against the Republican incumbent Shelley Moore Capito. Unfortunately, Paula Jean Swearingen lost. That was a hard pill to swallow. That was, that was tough. Now, another one is Marquita Bradshaw in Tennessee. Unfortunately, she did not win. Another one is Lisa Savage, a Green Party candidate running in Maine who had a shot because of Maine's ranked choice voting system. Unfortunately, Lisa Savage did not win. And also, Susan Collins was re-elected, so the Democrat didn't win there either. But other key races, not necessarily progressive people, but individuals who were running against high-profile Republicans. Um, Amy McGrath, to no one's surprise, she lost to Mitch McConnell. What is it, more than $100 million wasted, went up in flames, and she ran a terrible campaign. Amy McGrath lost to Mitch McConnell. He won in a landslide. So the most destructive member of the Senate will likely remain in control of the Senate, assuming Republicans retain control of the Senate. So that's awful. Um, additionally, Jamie Harrison, not a progressive by any stretch of the imagination, but I was hoping he would pull out a victory against Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham clung to power. Now, John Ossoff 
is someone who I think ran a good campaign against David Perdue. I was dunking on him back in uh, back in Georgia before when he ran in, I think, 2017 in the special election. Uh, but he stepped up. He's better, still not a progressive. I mean, we're still waiting on results in Georgia, so we can't say anything about this race yet. John Hickenlooper, though, he did defeat Cory Gardner, and this is the guy who ran for president who watched porn with his mom. So uh, he's going to Congress for whatever reason. I mean, I'm glad that John Hickenlooper defeated Cory Gardner, but it's like, was there not anyone else in the entire state of Colorado that could have run in place of John Hickenlooper? Really? John Hickenlooper? Uh, 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 a, uh, We've got to do better, Democrats. What are we doing? Why are we running people like this who have zero charisma, zero policy ideas? Like, what's, what's the end goal here? Just to hang on to power forever and make sure that the left and progressives are like perpetually dissatisfied? Like, what are we doing? Now, there were a couple of races that are going to make you um, scratch your head a little bit. I'm talking about some right-wingers who won. Um, now, first of all, the good news. Uh, Laura Loomer, she lost. Wasn't expected to win because this was a district that leaned heavily in uh, favor of Democrats. But the Republican Party has some new individuals who I'm assuming they will trot out as uh, rising stars in the Republican Party. I'm referring to two QAnoners and one Nazi who got elected to Congress. Madison Cawthorn, he was elected, and the first thing that he said was, cry more libs or something to that effect. I mean, this is a member of Congress now talking about owning the libs. Brilliant. Now, I've talked about him before. The dude is a dunce. He has zero policy ideas. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Somehow won against a Trump-backed candidate. He wasn't expected to win, but now he's going to go to Congress. He's been accused of sexual assault. He, uh, again, is a Nazi. So that's great. Good job, Republicans. You elected a Nazi. Okay. Now, QAnon has got two members of Congress now. Laura Boebert got elected to Congress in Colorado's 3rd Congressional District, and perhaps the craziest of all Republican candidates running in this cycle, which is uh, a really high bar to pass, Marjorie Taylor Greene in Georgia's 14th Congressional District defeated the Democrat by almost 50 points. It was not even close. It was a landslide. So, on one hand, we did elect some more progressives, not nearly as much as I wanted, but on another hand, a Nazi and two QAnoners will be going to Congress. I mean, the Republican Party is so irredeemable, so beyond the pale, that they are now literally electing members of a conspiracy cult and people who have an affinity for Adolf Hitler. If that doesn't tell you how far gone they are, nothing will. So we need to stop talking about the radical left and start actually talking about how the radical right truly is off the spectrum. The Republican Party is now the Donald Trump party. Even if Donald Trump loses, I mean, this party is now openly embracing fascism and conspiracy theories. And it's just, uh, it's not shocking. I was going to say shocking, but it's not really shocking. It's just disappointing. So overall, you know, um, Democrats did not take back the Senate the House, Democrats lost a little bit of ground so far based on what we know uh, with preliminary results. So they're actually discussing possibly a leadership change. Will that happen? Will Nancy Pelosi actually relinquish power or will she try to uh, back everyone into a corner and try to force her way back into a leadership role again after she has been a proven failure? We'll wait and see, but at least we can look forward to Cori Bush, Jamal Bowman, Mondaire Jones, um, possibly David Kim and Marie Newman in Congress serving alongside members of the squad. So that's something that's genuinely exciting to look forward to. But um, overall, for congressional candidates, not the best results. And I think that once we really see all of the votes counted, we need to talk about whether or not the lack of enthusiasm for Joe Biden hurt down-ballot Democrats. And we're not just talking about progressives. We're talking about corporate Democrats everywhere. I mean... Jamie Harrison lost. Amy McGrath lost. Democrats, centrist and progressive, lost. Is Joe Biden not being, you know, um, a good enough candidate part to do with this? I, I mean, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. 
But for now, I'm a little bit disappointed, to say the least. But, you know, it's... It's okay. You know, I was hoping for some surprise victories here. But maybe next time. Maybe next time. We're doing better each election cycle. I just hope that, you know, um, by 2022, we'll have even more victories.